Good morning. Welcome to Subramani.com. Please click on the bell icon and subscribe. Today I am talking about a topic which I have covered earlier. Should you continue your SIP during COVID times? Now, this question has to be answered in two parts. One, are you stopping your SIP because you are afraid that the market is going to shut down and it is the end of the world? Or are you shutting down your SIP because you don't have cash flows? Right? Two different things. Now, if it is a former, which means you are sure about your cash flows, you have your job, you have your EMIs covered, your everything else is covered and you can continue your uh, SIP, please continue. Right? You have your cash flow. Don't worry that the world is coming to an end. Nothing like that happens. During these times, if you stay invested and continue investing, you will get the benefit. Will you get it in 2021? I don't know. Will you get it in 2022? I don't know. But by the time you review it in 2025, you have definitely got the benefit. <clears throat> now the second question is, do you have the cash flow? Do you have a job which may not pay well for the next few months. Suppose you have a job in a hotel, suppose you have a job in a restaurant, suppose you have a job in an airline and you are not likely to be paid full salary or you may be laid off or anything like that, then you will need to stop your SIP because then your priorities change. Your priorities have to be, you have to have your cash flow, you have to make sure that you have enough money to pay your term insurance, your uh, medical insurance, your children's school fees, your basic day-to-day -day requirements, your, of course your EMI, right? You need to do all that. So when then you prioritize and say, I will shut down my uh, <clears throat> SIP for the next three months or six months, by which time hopefully things will be normal. Maybe things will be normal in seven months or eight months and then you can restart your SIP. The third and the more worrying case is when you don't have a job or you have been uh, downsized dramatically in terms of salary, you are going to get 30% or 40% of your salary as a take home and <clears throat> therefore your EMIs also are in jeopardy, then you have to stop your SIP. There is absolutely no choice because SIP is by choice. <clears throat> then go and renegotiate with the housing company, whichever you, has funded you. Suppose you have taken a 20 year loan and uh, 8 years of that is over. Go renegotiate and make it a 30 years loan. What happens is the size of the EMI falls dramatically and you will not be in default. Yes, it could be a temporary measure. You could do that and then you could go back to your original uh, higher EMI or you pay 2-3 EMIs at a time. All that can happen but right now you have got to conserve your cash flow which means you will stop your SIP of course and you will reduce your size of your EMI by talking to the lender. Please talk to the lender much before the problem. Don't go to him after your check bounces. That's not a very sensible thing to do nor is it sensible to pay a huge EMI and then wonder from where you will pay your term insurance. Your topmost priority has to be your term and medical insurance, your children's school fees, your society charges and then your EMI and then your SIP. So your EMI can be reduced. It can be dramatically reduced. You will pay higher interest. There is absolutely no doubt that you will be paying more interest. But it is still worthwhile because if your EMI can come down from 27,000 to 14,000 or 11,000 or something like that, maybe you could be able to afford it and you should be able to pay. There is no other choice, right? Then you downsize your life, you reduce your expenses, etc. Try moving back with your parents if you are very young or <clears throat> what have you. Uh, do all that, yes, but yes, you have to stop your SIP because you don't have the cash flow. So other than the cash flow issue, don't stop your SIP. Don't stop your SIP because you are afraid. Don't stop your SIP because you think that fund is not doing well. There could be a reversion to the mean. Please do a review. I am not saying stick to the same fund. Maybe you need to choose another fund. But don't break the habit of saving regularly. Right? There are three things. You have to earn, save and invest. 
Don't stop this habit of saving and investing because once you break the habit, it is difficult to go back, right? So, rephrasing what I said, if you have a cash flow problem, stop your SIP. If you don't have a cash flow problem, please continue your SIP. If you want to relook at your asset allocation or things like that, I don't mind, but don't change the amount. You want to put more money into debt, you want to put some money into gold, any of those things is okay. But if you have been doing a 45,000 rupee SIP or a 30,000 rupee SIP, make sure that that amount is not decreased because your salary is not decreased, right? However, if you have a cash flow problem, make sure that your priorities are changed, make sure that you pay your term insurance, medical insurance, school fees, etc, etc before you pay your EMI and SIP. EMI can be renegotiated, made smaller and then you will have a surplus or maybe you will just match, just about match what you have, that's fine. And then you prioritize your SIP. So SIP need not be the topmost priority, but if you have your cash flows intact, Please continue your recipe. Thank you.